Okay, you clicked on this video because you're trying to learn and you're ignorant to the fact that there's nothing special that fundamentally separates you, me, or the professional players. There ain't no quick fix to your terrible gameplay. The people better than you have either put in more time and practice, or they're just naturally better than you. Or maybe you're an actual beginner who's legitimately trying to grasp the basics of the game, which is also good, welcome. But also realize that while I think and I hope everyone can learn from this, this ain't your frail Grandma Josephine's Rocket League controls for dummies, where I explain each and every binding and how it makes your car go zoom zoom to the ball, you dumb baby. Truth is, this video has been made many, many times by many, many people, and you probably clicked on it expecting something different. Any kind of new information that maybe I, the most famous YouTuber and best Rocket League player of all time, can bring to the table. Well, I can't guarantee that, but I can guarantee that this is a video. I think there's two questions here, and maybe only one real answer. One, what are the best controls for Rocket League? And two, what do I think the best controls for Rocket League are? Note that this includes dead zone and sensitivities, but my main focus will be on the bindings and controller stuff. Firstly, I'll answer the latter. What I think the best controls are for the general population of car ballers to do good Rocket League games. And obviously, they're the ones I use. All right, this is the main gimmick. I use both my index and middle fingers on the controller with boost bound to R1. I hold the controller like this. My middle fingers go up on the back paddle things, and my index fingers go up on the button things at the top. This is often where I lose people, because it's uncomfortable to hold a controller like this, which is true. But life is about sacrifice. Nothing is guaranteed and nothing comes easy to you. If you can't push yourself to hold your fingers differently on your controller while sitting down in your own climate-controlled room while your mom cooks you dinner, then what can you do? Admittedly, it is uncomfortable at first. In fact, for me, it was actually painful for a while. This weird webbing area on my hand felt stretched and it was sore whenever I really pushed it. But if you think about it like doing the splits with your fingers, over time you can train the flexibility of those muscles and tendons and ligaments and all the other juices and cartilaginous tissue in your joints. It took about a week before it felt natural and maybe closer to two weeks for me to not feel any pain or stiffness after multiple hours of playing. Essentially, these controls allow you to simplify the relationship between your fingies and the buttons on the controller. Your right thumb controls your jump, your ball cam, and your camera. Yes, I know I said one function, whatever, shut up. Your right index finger controls your boost, your right middle controls your accelerate, left index is air roll power slide, left middle reverse, and your left thumb controls the stick stuff. Oh, and for dead zone and sensitivities, this is really the only time I'm going to mention it because it doesn't really matter. I'd recommend 0.1 dead zone to start, if you want to higher or lower do so. Same with the sensitivity, bump it up high, try it out. If you don't like it, you don't have to follow it, just find one that you like. Get a life, do what makes you happy. I don't care, numb nuts. In my early Rocket League days, I played mostly 1v1, which requires lots of ground play and dribbles, and I quickly noticed how I couldn't flick the ball while boosting through the flick. My aerials were also lacking because I had to jam my thumb finger back and forth from boost to jump while also simultaneously moving my left stick in time with those jumps. And finally, I wanted to be cool and toggle ball cam on and off when shooting the ball like the pros do. This is where the fancy new controls come in. By moving boost to a finger you don't use for anything else, R1, you're not hindered at any point in your gameplay. Now I can boost, power slide, flick the ball, and cook an omelet all at the same time, effortlessly. Later on, I moved ball cam to square because like I said, I was toggling it off and on a lot. So now I don't even have to move my thumb. It's just laid across X and square like one of those amphibious fat tusk animals that I can't remember the name of. Alongside ball cam, I added air roll left to circle, opening up a whole other world for mechanical control in the air. I also have triangle as scoreboard, although looking back, I would have made that the other direction for air roll because now I'm only comfortable using the air roll left instead of both air roll left and right. Also, air roll left on circle is kind of confusing because it's the rightmost button on the controller, so I'd recommend triangle as air roll left and circle as air roll right. Here are the color-coded, updated controls that I would recommend to people. In summary, boost on R1, drift air roll L1, ball cam on square, air roll left triangle, air roll right on circle. This gives you an extremely simple setup with one finger per action, not counting this guy, and sets you up to learn both air roll directions without sacrificing the default air roll. Okay. Now for the other question, removing my own bias, what are the best controls for Rocket League? And to that, I have no answer. Obviously, if someone comes up to me and asks my opinion about what the best controls are, I'm gonna say my own. But the professional scene has made it very clear that regardless of controls, I and you and everyone else just suck at this game. 
Squishy Muffins plays with default controls and Drift on L1. Cuxer plays with fully default controls. Yukio plays on keyboard and mouse. Justin plays with Claw. JNaps, Garrett, Jake, Jazer, and countless others all have boost on R1. It doesn't matter. Well, I think mine are most comfortable in the long run because it simplifies all your set phalangeal actions, all that matters is you do what you like. Okay, and finally, bonus question. How do I switch my controls? I'm gonna assume you're not asking me how to literally go here and press one button and then another button, but more so the approach and the mental side to changing something that so heavily affects your gameplay. My best gamers ready certified coaching call is to go full cold turkey. Don't wean yourself off of your controls, just change them all at once and force your body to adapt. Anytime you make a change, it's going to feel uncomfortable. You've likely built up a ton of muscle memory with your old settings, so the important part is that you see the change through. If you try to make a controller change, then go back to what you had done before, and then back to the new controls and back and forth, you're gonna get stuck and just end up back where you started. It won't come naturally, and it probably won't feel that good at first. I'd say to do lots of training packs, custom training, free play, all the normal stuff. Maybe play some unranked. Maybe do ranked. I don't really, if you don't care, I don't, I don't care. Maybe 1v1 some of your lower ranked friends who can finally beat you because you're literally playing like a baboon who's using a controller for the first time. Just get some time under your belt. You're not losing any permanent skill or control by moving your binds. You're just hesitant because you care about this game and your MMR so much that you would be embarrassed describing how much you care to that girl in your class who's never heard of Rocket League. <laughs> So if you're looking to make a change, I'd say to give it about a week minimum. Give yourself time to become familiar with this new system and try not to judge it too early. Then if you like what you had before more, just go back. None of this has to be permanent if you don't want it to be. Just don't take it that seriously. You're like a platinum or a diamond or a low champ or something. Nothing is on the line here, you MMR glutton. Just try new things or don't, or just stop playing altogether or only play twos and complain that you can't rank up because of your teammates. None of it matters. Goodbye.